Chapter Thirteen of Claude Lightfoot, or How the Problem Was Solved, by Father Francis Finn. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Thirteen, in which Mister Russell unwittingly prophesies. Mister Lightfoot, on the following day, grew somewhat reconciled to his disappointment. He spoke very kindly to Claude and did all in his power to console him. But when a question arose of choosing some other Sunday for Claude's first communion, the father's prejudices came into play. Mr. Lightfoot considered the blazing of many candles, the pomp of priestly vestments, the organ peal, and a number of boys in white kid gloves, and of girls with blue sashes and crowns of flowers, as being almost essential to the proper making of First Communion. He could no more conceive of one boy's making his First Communion alone than he could conceive of one bird's flocking together by itself. There could be no pomp, no dignity, no display, where one boy was concerned. To omit this pomp, this dignity, this display, on so striking an occasion, would be un-American. In the end it came to this, that Claude was to make his first communion when and where the ceremonies came sufficiently up to Mr. Lightfoot's standards of Americanism this threw very little light upon the subject mr lightfoot's standard on this point being known to no one including himself claude was kept quite busy for four days entertaining many visitors and receiving their condolences all who called were astonished at his cheerfulness and mirth many judged that the mischance had caused him no sorrow claude and kate said nothing of worden to the college boy visitors for they feared that should elmwood or collins or winter learn of his cruelty the bully might have to render a hard account on friday claude started for school with as happy a face as though he had never known a trial it was a beautiful morning and the sound of a few singing birds that had strayed into the avenue fell delightfully upon his ears while the clear cool air the odor of flowers and the fresh green lawns were there ever such lawns so green so trim as those that adorn the avenue of milwaukee all these things i say filled him with happiness what a pleasure it was to feel his feet firm beneath him to leap to bound in healthful youth and happy innocence claude felt what a great joy it was to be well again and he was happy as a lark to leave nothing wanting he came upon a tin can and had the exquisite pleasure of kicking it full two squares hello little man exclaimed mr russell as the cheerful youth tripped in at the college gate how do you do sir responded claude as he doffed his cap and burst into a radiancy of smile i'm glad to see you come on here and sit down i want to have a talk with you mr russell who was stationed in the yard each morning partly to greet the boys partly to urge the loiterers in to studies led claude over to the bench claude he began i'm glad your communion was put off claude looked surprised so you don't believe me yes sir if you say so i do say it look here claude i've been thinking about your case a good deal and the more i think the surer i feel that it was a good thing that it turned out the way it did you didn't think i was good enough sir i didn't say any such thing no the more i thought of it the more i felt convinced that you were the best prepared boy in the class and that's the reason i felt glad that you were put off claude broke into a giggle you needn't make fun of me said the prefect in his most serious way i'm not sir but it seems so funny to hear that i was put off because i was so well prepared it seems funny but it isn't and the reason why i stick to my opinion is because i know that god's ways are not our ways do you understand no sir who said you did well here's the case you knew your catechism like a book you made every effort to get over your faults you prayed hard and you learned your lessons and you stopped fidgeting in class as near as it is possible for you to do so and when you lost your temper and talked back to mr grace you did penance for it in sackcloth and ashes <laughs> i think not sir 
little boy i speak in figures and father maynard considered you the best prepared boy of all and so did the president and the vice-president and your teacher was anxious for you to make your first communion was he sir of course he was and so was i and i prayed for you every day and he prayed for you you did exclaimed claude in astonishment can't you believe anything i say of course we did we don't measure the importance of people by their size well now let me go on there was that sister of yours she's as good a girl as any i know of she was praying and working with you yes indeed sir she did more than i did and your mamma was praying to see the day and in fact we were all anxious for it and then you made a great confession a splendid confession how did you know that sir didn't i see you coming out of the chapel with a smile that was worth getting patented it was so happy now look you claude everything was in your favour and still you were held back who held you back god said claude boy you've got brains it was god it was by his permission that you were held back now claude i'm only thirty years old but i've tried to keep my eyes open all my life and if a man does that he can see as much in thirty years as another can in sixty and i tell you claude that as far as i can judge from all that i've known and seen and read i tell you that god has allowed you to be put off because he has special designs on you he has taken the matter out of our little hands into his own keep up your courage my little man and each day as you arise try to act as though that day were to be your communion day it's coming you don't know when i don't know when but come it will when and where god pleases he will dispose of all things sweetly and it is my honest belief that when god does come to you my little man he will come with special and wondrous graces there claude that's my opinion mr russell in these latter words had dropped his tone of banter his face had taken on a look of earnestness and his heart kindled his words into what sounded like inspiration one could see that he meant what he said that he was speaking from strong conviction and yet had he learned at that moment how close he had come upon the actual facts how literally his words forecast what was to come he would have been astounded this high lovely and consoling spirituality fell upon willing ears and penetrated a noble heart mr russell said claude arising and taking the prefect's hand i can't say what i'd like to say people don't know how i've been feeling for i've kept it to myself but now it's all gone and i'm happier than ever and i won't forget what you've said not one word and as claude went into the chapel he said to himself oh if i could only grow up to be a man like him and mr russell thought that little mite will be able to teach me anything whether in virtue or learning before i'm fifty End of chapter 13